Greetings, Lunarians and Brigandine fans. I am your host, Vagus Sonari. This is a very exciting day for Brigandine, the Legend of Renersia. If you are an owner of the game itself, we are getting a free update, which is actually currently live as I'm speaking now, December 3rd on Nintendo Switch, and it's due to release along with the PlayStation 4 official release on December 10th. The free update is called Titans and the Iron Front. We're going to go over everything that the devs have added to the game one by one and showcasing what it's like inside the game as well. I hope you're excited for this. I know I am. Let's get into it. Patch notes are as follows. If you wish to have access to these patch notes and read them for yourself, I will leave them in the description below. But the first thing we're going to look at is the added custom difficulty. It is described as you can now customize up to eight settings to enjoy a wider range of game difficulty. Let's pop on over to the game menu and see what it's like. The new custom difficulty can be accessed by starting a new game either on the Legend of Renersia mode, which is the main story, or the alternate chapter. It does vary depending on what you pick, but we're going to go for the main mode first. So what you'll do is pick your faction of choice as usual, confirm it, and pick your easy, normal, hard difficulties, or pick a new custom difficulty. This is the new option right here. Let's take a look. We have base difficulty, which is self-explanatory. You can pick between easy, normal, and hard mode. And this right here is extremely beautiful. They have listened to the community where we have been requesting no time limit on any given difficulty. So if you wish to take that off and not feel so rushed throughout the main story, you can take the time limit off during the main campaign. The next one is also a very big one for this game. The computer AI, or the defensive AI rather, can be altered between not guarding at a castle hex, guarding a castle hex, and random battlefield. I'm not exactly sure what to make of Random Battlefield. I'm going to assume it's a mixture between these two right here. However, we have been doing some testing in the Discord server, and the Guard Castle Hex means that the enemies will stay on their castle, not allowing you to take it over by turn 12. If you didn't know, one of the conditions for victory in a battle when you're invading a castle is to stand on the castle tile at the end of turn 12, and you are able to take over that castle. However, with this option on, they make it a lot less easy for you to do so. Pretty exciting stuff. Let's move on. You can put monster capture, allow, or disallow. So if you disallow this, you are only dependent on what you summon and train yourself. Next option is the quest success rate. We can either go between no change, 100% player success, 100% enemy success, or 100% nation success. The most difficult option is of course giving 100% success to the enemy only and not yourself. If you want a more balanced playthrough, go for 100% nation success. Next option is mana acquisition, self-explanatory here. No change to the acquisition or we can double the mana income that we receive, the enemy receives, or we all receive. Hardest option, obviously giving the enemies times two mana acquisition, or if you want a more balanced playthrough, all nations get times two. Next one is a pretty interesting one, the Revival Stone Access. Either we get it from quests, we get it per season, which is pretty broken in my opinion. <laughs> the enemy gets per season Revival Stones, which is broken for them, and also per season all. Once again, the hardest option is getting the enemy to have Revival Stones per season, or if you want more balanced, we all get Revival Stones per season. And last but not least, we have Experience Acquisition, where there's no change to the experience, or we can double it for ourselves, the enemy, or everyone on the continent. Hardest option being giving it to enemies only, and balanced would be all nations. If you want the most challenging playthrough of this game, these are the settings that you are going to use. Time limit, I'm really not too picky about. I will probably end up leaving this off all the time. However, if you do want an extra challenge, you can keep it on the regular 2.5 years for normal hard mode. To showcase my settings, this is what it will look like for the most part on every single one of my playthroughs that I showcase on YouTube from here on out. And that was just one feature. We have a ton more to cover, so stay tuned for the rest. As I said before, the difficulty settings are different on the alternate chapter of challenge mode. Some of them are set in stone, so let's check those out really quick. As you can tell, most of the features are set in stone, including base difficulty, which is hard mode. Victory conditions are normal. Quest success rate, no change. Mana acquisition, no change. Revival stone access from quests. And experience acquisition is normal. However, if you want to make it even more challenging, you can disallow your monster captures. And of course, you can also change the computer's AI behavior from not guarding the castle hex, guarding the castle hex, or change it to random battlefield. Next big feature we're going to look at is the addition of the high-level monsters Titan and Shadow Goblin. And here they are, folks. I went ahead and booted up my old Shinobi Tribe playthrough that I showcased on YouTube before starting the Morelva playthrough. If you load up an old file, you can still class up 
your leveled Cyclops and your leveled Goblin Knights. As long as they are 20 or higher, they can go to tier 3, which let's check that right now. Cyclops at level 20 and above can go to new class of Titan. The stat changes are as follows, more HP, attack, strength, and defense, but a ton more MP, and there's a very big reason that I'm going to showcase here in just a moment. Looking at the Titan skills, we have a new skill called Ultimate Fist. This right here, I do not believe has any changes to it. It's still the same description as Hyper Fist, so no change there. Heavy Impact has a change from a 33% chance of inflicting faint and decreasing targets attack and defense to a whopping 50% chance. And the big showcase here, a new skill ability called Ragnarok. It deals major damage to all units in a two hex straight line and has a 33% chance of inflicting faint and it never misses. Ragnarok will cost you 60 MP, so if you are able to get the MP up to at least 180, you can use this three times in one battle. There's no magic to be had, however, if we do go over to abilities, look at this. We already have faint immunity, which is already insane. However, we get counter damage up S, which is huge, increases damage done by counterattacks by 20%, and also accuracy up A, which is extremely huge, for these units in particular, increases accuracy by 10%. And of course we have to showcase what the 3D model looks like and the transformation, so let's check it out. This dude gets a massive increase in size and look at the tribal paint on the arms and the face. I really, really like this aesthetic. It is really cool. Let's see the transformation. Here we go. Boom, he takes up the whole portrait. <laughs> Pretty cool, man. We now have tier three giants, Gaius's, Cyclops, call it what you will but the titan is officially here fantastic and let's not forget we got one more to showcase let's take a look at the shadow goblin shadow goblins increase in stats are as follows more hp attack strength agility and defense and a little bit more mp as well so not crazy in the stat department however we do get new skills and abilities let's check those on the skill tab we have plague slash increasing to shadow slash let's look at the description it does seem we have an increase of a 30 percent chance of inflicting poison to a 50 percent chance the spare wave unfortunately did not get an upgrade it still is the same as reaper wave 3 hex radius and has 25% chance of inflicting paralyzed still, so no change there. But he does get Abaddon Wave. I'm not exactly sure how much MP this costs. I haven't used the Shadow Goblin yet. However, he does get MP on this class up, so I'm assuming this costs at least maybe 10, maybe even 20. Who knows? But it deals a moderate damage to a single enemy unit with the 3 hex radius and has a 33% chance of inflicting paralyzed. No magic abilities for this guy as well. However, we do get a nice little buff of critical rate up B. And of course, let's showcase the transformation of the 3D model. Here we go. Into Shadow Goblin. That looks really, really cool. I didn't expect them to make any changes to the Goblin. It's kind of the last one that I expected them to make changes to. However, I'm pretty pleased about it, so kudos. Now, as we continue, I won't be showcasing all of these within the game because they are mostly self-explanatory, but let's continue. The next change we have is, while in combat, you can now turn auto mode on by pressing the left stick and off by pressing either the left stick again, or the A button, or the B button. If we head over to the producer letter under this auto mode button section, they do mention a few tactics that you can use to make the best use of auto mode if you are wanting to make the battles a little bit more faster. It is as follows. Number one, move only the knight during the player turn. Number two, stand by the knight and turn auto mode on with the left stick. Step three is monsters start moving automatically. Step four, while the last monster is still moving, turn auto mode off. Number five, repeat these steps for troop B, moving just the knight. And number six, move monsters using auto mode. If you rinse and repeat this, the battles will go much faster, especially marching towards your enemy before the battle starts. Next function is the combat AI costume difficulty setting of guard, castle, hex has been added. Now we checked this out earlier. Let's read the description. If you set the computer defensive AI to guard castle hex in the custom difficulty settings, the computer will deploy and keep troops around their castle base or hex. Once again, they have made it more difficult if you have the setting on to capture the enemy's castle by simply staying on their castle tile by the end of turn 12. Next feature I was pleasantly surprised to see, I didn't expect this one, combat AI difficulty on hard healing section algorithm is now more effective. So maybe we won't see any more Gimp Gilliam moves where he's area healing someone with Veil on them and then diminishing it, and also not healing captured monsters. So hopefully they did like an overhaul with that especially, so that's pretty exciting to see. The next AI overhaul for difficulty is they have made it easier for the AI to target and attack our knights more frequently. For the AI on all difficulties, they have fixed the timing and targeting of certain buffing spells. This probably means that they won't be casting Veil at the very beginning of the fight, 
or casting a protect spell that doesn't make any sense, for example. I know I had several examples of where they tried to cast silence on some of my casters. That was a guaranteed 0%, so they always missed every single time, but we keep trying to silence my casters, even if it was 0%. I'm going to assume they also fixed the accuracy for physical attacks on this as well, because several times I have seen Gyguses and Giants try to hit me, even though it was a guaranteed miss. Pretty exciting stuff, we got some hard battles ahead. The next one I'm definitely going to showcase in-game. They have added a Manage Items function. The description is as follows. Players are able to use all of the items or changing of equipment across all bases. Let's pop on over to the game and check this menu out, shall we? So here we are back on the overworld map. You can select any castle you want, it doesn't matter. Once you select a castle, you have a new menu called Manage Items. Let's take a look. As you can tell, we can cycle through all of the items that we have, including consumable items, and manage them from this menu to any knight within the game. You can equip every single unit unit, leaders and monsters included, right here from this menu. I'm going to showcase this now by going to the Sanctity Armor. If I go here, I can choose Equip, and also look at every single knight within my army, no matter where they are stationed, and equip any single one of them from this menu. It also gives you some nice information for each piece on the right hand side, checking out the stats and also the equipable classes at the very bottom. In this case, Sanctity Armor can go to a knight class, a barbarian class, a Temple Knight class, or my boy Tim, as you can see. But once again, all you have to do is click on the equipment piece, click equip, and then choose who you want to equip it within your nation, no matter where they are stationed. Let's go ahead and pick Galavard right here, might as well. And he has the Lightning Helm, just like that. It is beautiful. I love this feature. Another issue that they have addressed that us players were having problems with was the clutter of gear. In order to get rid of gear clutter from stuff that you did not need, you had to individually click on each one and discard them one by one. As it currently stands, I do not need all these steel helms, so what I'm going to do is hit the Y button and then toggle each and every single one of these. I won't do all of them. And then I'll go ahead and discard all of these at once. Select Discard selected items, and then they are gone. Let's go ahead and do the rest. Might as well, since it doesn't really look like it happened. <laughs> I have that many steel helms, so I'm sure you all have more. But steel helms should all be gone by this discarding right here. Bam, they are gone. Just like that. That is huge. It saves a ton of time, so definitely make use of this feature. As a cautionary note, you do have an option to discard all gear pieces that are unequipped. Please use caution when using this feature. You may not want to make use of this unless you are absolutely sure you want to get rid of everything that is unequipped at certain parts in your playthrough. Really exciting feature. Let's move on. Along with that discarding of multiple equipment feature, we do also have a releasing of multiple monsters at once feature. I know you've experienced clutter in the stockpiles in your castles as well with your monsters, so that'll be very nice instead of going one by one releasing the monsters that you do not need. The next feature right here, I am stupid excited about this. This is a huge time saver. I'm going to showcase this in game, but they have added a repeat command in quest to repeat a particular quest every single season. This means you do not have to re-up your quests castle by castle, night by night. They are going to repeat the same quest every single season if you want them to. I will showcase that to you right now. Here is the quest menu. For example, if I want Jaden to repeat this quest over and over again without me having to re-up it every single time, all you gotta do is to hover over the quest, hit the X button, and he's going to repeat that quest over and over and over again until you tell him to stand by manually. This is beautiful. This is going to save me a lot of time, especially trying to get videos out because every single time the end game pops off, I have to take a lot of time to grind. And during that time, I have to re-up quests over and over and over again. Now I no longer need to worry about that. All I have to worry about is putting people on repeat quests and go do my battles and grind out. Out of all the quality of life updates that we've had, this is probably going to be my favorite one just because it saves the most time in my opinion. Next update is they are displaying details when collecting items during quest results. Continuing on, we have added detailed stats page for knights and monsters in info panel. Sort function in info panel will now remember last sort order. Added info for knights in each base on main map. Added info and power relationship to system menu. The next feature is they added an option for number of frontline knights confirmation dialog. It can be toggled on or off. I'm assuming they're talking about the dialogue exchange that you have at the very beginning of fights where it shows one dialogue piece between one knight and another knight. Unless they have a specific dialogue, you can turn off the generic ones. Game version at start of game and selected difficulty now displayed when replaying battles. Next one is a huge request from multiple people in the community. They have increased the monster limit from 100 to a whopping 200. The original Brigandine had a cap of 140. 
I'm kind of surprised they went all the way to 200, but this is huge in case you have gone into a situation where you've had to forcefully dismiss a monster to make room for more. Now you can feel free to build a whole bunch of teams at your leisure. Moving on to combat updates, we have increased changeable camera angles of the height from two tiers to three tiers. They have added an option for army color coding, which you can switch between two different types. Color coding can be activated in battle with the left trigger button, like this. To change the color coding during battle, go ahead and pull up your settings menu from the start menu, go to options, and go down to settings. Color coding will be under display and events at the very bottom. You can change this between country stats, or ally and enemy. Country stats is what we just saw. Let's go ahead and check out ally and enemy as well. And here is what ally and enemy look like. I don't know if you guys saw, but I noticed something very, very cool and a big throwback to the original game. Watch this. Do you see how the pulsing command area is green because we are the Shinobi tribe? If I change this back to ally and enemy for color coding, command area or rune area is now the original blue color from the original game that is so cool it's a throwback to the original game i love that feature i think i'll keep this one on just for nostalgia's sake next combat update is another throwback to the original game in the original game attacks on fainted units always hit they brought that back from the original it's very good to see that it made no sense whatsoever if a monster was fainted and they had a chance to be missed by your attack once again Attacks on fainted units will always hit. Next combat update they have done is added a feature to increase or decrease the tiers of speed that you experience in the battle if you turn on the fast forward. Once again, hit start on your battle menu. Go ahead and hit up options. Go to the settings, display and events, and it is right here above army color coding. You can change the battle speed between fast, very fast, or fastest. Next one is they have shortened the display time of healing or poison damage at the start of turn, which is freaking amazing. I love that. It saves a lot of time. Going to more generic updates, we have an added option for faster cursor speeds, and you can select from four different tiers. You can find that option under the same menu you found the speed option. Just go up to the very top. Cursor speed is right here. You can change it between normal, fast, very fast, and fastest. A very nice quality of life improvement. I'm definitely a victim of this. They have adjusted the menu behavior to prevent players from accidentally ending their turn. I know a lot of players that are going to be stoked to see this, including my boy FrostPDP. Shout out to you, man. They have heard us. Challenge mode feature here. They have removed the level ups from random events in challenge mode. They have adjusted the summoning and organization algorithm to favor monsters with higher costs. I have never been a victim of this next one. I'm assuming it's crash related, but they have fixed a rare GPU related bug. Lowered the volume for level up sound effect. Other combat fix here is fixed a bug where retreating knights occasionally could not be found in any base. I've never come across this feature actually, so <laughs> I did not know that was a thing, So, but a good fix nonetheless. <laughs> Fixed issues related to the recruiting conditions of certain knights. Tutorial fix as they fixed a rare bug that occurred during screen transitions. Minor text fixes and other minor bug fixes. Guys, this is a huge list. Again, I will leave this on the top of the description below. Please check it out if you want to review it for yourself. I'll also leave you the new produce letter that is on the website in the description below. Go check that out as well. If you have not seen the showcase video of all the new features from the devs themselves, you can catch that video in the description as well. I have not seen an English trailer for that yet, but if I do see one, I will link that as well. But regardless, both the Japanese and the English, if available, will be in the description for you to check out. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. This is a huge day for Brigandine. I'm so excited to bring this news to you. If you have any questions on what we've went over so far in the updates, please let me know in the comments below. I will be happy to answer any questions that I can. If you have not joined up the Discord server of Brigandine, you can find that in the description below where everybody is talking about this new update, their thoughts, etc. Once again, as of right now, the update is currently live for Nintendo Switch players and will go live on December 10th when the PlayStation 4 version releases. Be sure that your game is up to date and let me know what you think of the new features. If you wish to catch my very first playthrough of Brigandine Legend of Renersia, you can hit up the card in the top right hand corner of this video where I played for the first time the Holy Gustava Empire. I will also link my Shinobi Tribe playthrough that has been complete and my current playthrough of the United Islands of Morelva in that same card. Check them out. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you in the next video. I am your host, Vakosunari. See you on the battlefield, Rune Knights. Peace. Bye.